Okay, welcome to the fourth video in our CorelDRAW X8 training series. Today we're going to look at a few different tools that are in front of you here. Pick tool, duplicate, mirror, combine, weld, trim, intersect, simplify, front minus back, and back minus front. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is open a new document. And we're going to call it Corel 4. And I'm just going to hit OK. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is start by uh, making some squares. So we're going to make a couple of squares on top of each other, rectangles I should say, and uh, we're going to learn about duplicating. So duplicating to make another one of exactly the same object, you can control C, control V, which is copy and paste. Um, you can also go up to edit um, and choose copy and paste. And there's probably, yep, there's these icons up here for cut copy and paste. But duplicating is a little different. Duplicating, um, you can actually have it make a duplicate copy in an exact spot. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. So say we want to put um, this rectangle and I want to have another rectangle that's here and then I want to keep making rectangles here and here, but I want them the same distance, the same space apart. Well, duplicate can do that very easily. How I was making uh, multiples, by the way, if uh, you don't remember from current videos, is I was moving the item with the left mouse button held down, and while I'm holding the left mouse button, I'm clicking the right button, and it creates another uh, copy of itself. So you click and drag, you can see them both, and use the other mouse button, and then let go of both buttons, and you can see that there's another one. Anyways, for duplicate, there's actually a command underneath uh, the edit function. Uh, right here, duplicate, control D is also the shortcut. We'll probably use the shortcut for this one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click and hold, and I'm going to hold down shift so I get it on the same line. When I'm holding shift, it won't let me put it up. Uh, it'll probably put it straight up, but it won't let me put it up and down. So let's say I want it to exactly here, and I want to duplicate by clicking with the right mouse button now, and I've made two. Now all I have to do is go Control D, which is the duplicate, and it makes another one exactly the same distance. You could go, I'll zoom out a little bit, you could go to um, Edit and Duplicate as well, and it makes them, it makes them the exact distance. So if I want to go up now, I can click on my object, I can hold, um, whoops, sorry, move it, hold down uh, Shift to put it on the straight line right click uh, while I'm holding and then control D D D so it makes it exactly the same f space apart another thing you can do is duplicate in a uh, rotation so I'm gonna hold uh, control and I'll make a perfect square and then I'm gonna go to my rotate bars by clicking again and I'm gonna rotate I'm gonna hold down uh, control so it snaps to certain degrees so the first snap is 345 and I'm gonna right click while I'm holding the leftmost button down and it creates a second one now control D will duplicate in the in an exact degrees and we create you can see an intricate uh, pattern so duplicate can be used to make um, interesting patterns like this or to duplicate objects across the screen as needed. You can duplicate text, you can duplicate shapes, curves, whatever you'd like to do. So that takes care of uh, the duplicate uh, function. Okay, so mirror and combine, and maybe we'll go through the pick tool as well here, um, like we talked about. So what I'm going to do is, on the pick tool, there's this little flyout that if we drop this down, there's a free hand pick and a free transform. The pick tool is your basic pick tool. It lets you click on objects and pick them. That's why it's called a pick tool. And that's pretty much what it does. Let's say, for example, I have objects that are kind of in top of each or on top of each other and kind of grouped, you know, quite a bit. And I want to pick the middle one, but when I'm clicking, I'm selecting, uh, I might be selecting uh, different ones. And so the pick tool has this feature called a freehand pick. And if I click it, it allows me to draw a box around the item I want to pick, and it picks the middle item. So if I had a bunch of these things in a, whoops, I'll just go back to my regular pick tool. There we go. If I had a bunch of items kind of all over the place, and I wanted to select just the one item, I could use the pick tool, marquee select around what I want, or I could use the free ha freehand pick tool, and I could say, okay, I want this one, but not that one, and I want to go with this one, and then I want this one, but I don't want that one, and I'll go this way, and I'll go like that. And as I let go, it picks just the ones that I've told it to pick, with ignoring the ones I, I went around. So that's what the freehand uh, pick does. And lastly, there is 
the button called free transform and free transform has a number of things you can do along the top here you've got free rotation free angle rec reflection uh, sorry uh, free scale and free skew so basically free rotation if you click it and then I click anywhere on the screen here let's try here and if I move you can see that it rotates around that specific spot that I clicked on um, if I hold down sh uh, shift and control it actually yeah it does snap at certain degrees so if I want it straight up and down I'm holding down control I can let go and do that um, the free angle reflection exactly the same find where you want to have the angle and um, reflect reflect the angle um, where you have it and then there's also the scale and you can you know move around and, and scale based on where you are a lot of controls just for for designing or, or drawing things um, you know m manipulating the shapes and then lastly is the skew so I'll check click on this one and I'll do a skew on it and you can see it's skewing it um, as I move the mouse around and the farther you click away from stuff the farther it it skews so that is the um, pick tool, essentially free transform. I rarely use this. It's um, you know if you play with it, you'll get good at it. But um, you know for rotation, I just normally use the rotation things. Um, but that's what it does. If you want to play with it, feel free. I'm going to go back to the pick tool, and we're going to go back to see what our next topic is. And it looks like we've done pick tool, we've done duplicate. Okay, mirror. So I'm going to go back to Corel four here, or Corel title four. I probably named that a little bit uh, I should have named, named it training lesson four but anyways let's do some mirrors so say I want a mirror image of this shape um, e very easily there's two mirror buttons there's a mirror horizontally and there's a mirror vertically so I can just simply click the button and it mirrors and if I click this one it mirrors the horizontal way you can do this with text c-o-r-e-l and I can click this and I can choose to mirror it or flip it upside down and mirror it and so those are the buttons that you're going to be using for, for mirror, mirroring um, your items. Another way to mirror is to click and drag. So I'll type in the word Corel again. Let's see. C-O-R-E-L. -E and another way to do it to mirror is to grab this side node and go all the way over. And you can see as I flip past that point, it starts to mirror it. And if I hold the uh, control button, it just gives me the choice of uh, mirrored up or down, um, so it doesn't doesn't actually stretch the lettering. So I'm holding down control. If I hold down shift, it does the mirroring from the middle. Um, I'm going to hold down control, and I'll just let go, and there we have a mirror. So there's another way of mirroring besides the mirror buttons on there. You can just flip stuff with the side cursors. You can go up and down as well. So if I wanted to mirror this up and down, I could just flip it like this. Holding down control will make it a perfect shape um, instead of skewing it uh, like this. So holding down control, control and shift and alt. You use those a lot in Corel Draw. Lots of times they do stuff so um, you know when you're manipulating things try holding them down and doing things. Also in the hints and tips um, you can find most of this information as well um, but it's easier just to play with it and try it. Okay so next we're going to open the object manager and the object manager is under uh, Windows, Dockers and then object manager. And we can see we have all of our shapes um, and all of our text on the uh, object manager here. And I'm just going to go back to our uh, review so I can see what's next on the list. Okay, so we've got these uh, next features is combine, weld, trim, intersect, all of this stuff here, create boundary. That is all found on when we select multiple items. You can see that up here it changes um, combine, weld, uh, trim, intersect, simplify, uh, front minus back, back minus front, and create boundary. So these ones we're going to go through next. So the first one we're going to go through is combine. And you can see right now if I select these two rectangles, um, they are two objects selected. If I click the combine button, it ends up being one object. Now if I move this, it's combined with the other one. If I view the nodes under the pick, um, under the shape tool, they're the same shape um, if, if I take them and I can move them around they, they are connected in one solid shape you can see that I've selected over here on my object manager one curve um, it's no longer a rectangle it's a curve um, so that's just the shape and it's just one so let's combine a third object let's bring in another rectangle down here 
Let's select all three and click Combine. You can select all three at once if you like. Three objects selected, click Combine, and we have one curve. So it's just a way of combining shapes to make one new shape. And as you're doing them, they're, co they're converting them to curves. They're no longer rectangles. So as I use my, my shape tool, they will allow me to manipulate the nodes as opposed to a regular rectangle. When I use my shape tool, it does my curved corners. Okay, so that's pretty much the combine tool. I'm going to undo this to get, uh, actually I'll just delete all this and make a bunch of new shapes or I can work with these shapes I've got over here. That's simpler. Bunch of rectangles. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is select two of them, and then our next thing on the list is called weld. And you can see by the picture, it's kind of two rectangles making one rectangle. And if I intersect or go over top of an item, and I select both of them and choose weld, it makes one shape with the outline of the shape. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to make, I'm going to take this one, oops, I only want to grab one of those. Uh, I'll make this a small square and I'll place it inside the rectangle and I'll select both and I'll click uh, I'll click uh, weld this time and you can see what happens is it welded into one shape. So it takes the outsides of the shapes and it welds them into one uh, piece. So we can do a third one, I can maybe do that, select all three, weld and we have an outline piece, one solid piece. I can manipulate the nodes individually if I want. Um, but basically weld just connects or combines shapes together to make one shape. Next, select these two objects. We have something called trim. Trim, um, basically, as you can see, it takes one item and trims the item from behind it. So if I take two items and I stack them on top, and let's add some color so we can see what's, what's in front and what's behind. So we've got the blue in front, which we can see clearly here. And if I select both of these and I click on the trim button, as we click it and I move this out of the way, you can see we've got this piece and this piece is still there. It's trimmed the piece from behind it. You usually want to do two objects at once on this one. So for example, if I have three and I put three, let's see what happens when I trim. So I'll go up to the top, I'll click trim, and we should have this one piece from in between all those ones. Um, it does work on the stacking order. So as things are in front, it's the bottom piece that actually gets trimmed. So that's important too if you wanted to you know, have the shapes overlap each other um, and so on. Okay, next if we select all three items, we have um, a simplify. Simplify, you can see that we've got a rectangle that's perfect, another perfect rectangle, and then a strange weird green shape. But if I s stick these together and I select them and I choose simplify, what it's going to do is it's going to make one shape of blue that's this shape. The green is going to hack out this part and the red should stay the same. So as I simplify, we have one piece and you can see that as I, I'm just going to undo that, this piece here has been deleted from behind and this piece has been deleted from behind as well. So it simplifies the objects into um, the pieces of overlap. So let's just try that again. I'm going to create some more objects here. I'll add some fills, uh, light blue, purple, and pink. These ones are kind of close. So I'll change that to a darker blue. So you can see, um, I'm going to put this behind the other color. And uh -huh, so you can see that here, I'm going to, oops, we have a group of objects here. I'm going to click here and ungroup them. So right click and ungroup objects so that they're all there. And I want to bring this purple one in front of these other two. So I'm just going to drag it in my object manager and bring it up to the top. All right, so now if I select all of these and I simplify, I'll be left with this blue shape with this cutout, this purple shape with this cutout, and this dark purple shape with this cutout. Right now you can see they're full triangles. And so I'll select all of them and I will choose simplify. And there we are. And you can see that we've got these weird shape pieces now from simplifying them. So that's a, a way to make new shapes as well. All right, so we're continuing on. Uh, let's select two items and we'll go to the next one, which is called front minus back and also back minus front. So this is when you want to get rid of the shape. Let's say, for example, I have this weird spaceship looking thing and um, I'm going to bring that item in front of everything. So let's say I have this item and I want to be left with just this shape and I don't need this blue one anymore. I can select all of it. I can choose um, back minus the front. So it's going to save the back and it's going to minus this blue block and it's going to be left with a big whole shape. So there's another shape 
And so there was two shapes, and now there's only one shape or one curve. Um, it's deleted the other one. And the same applies for the, the other way, um, front minus back. It just takes the front, it minuses the back, or it takes the back and it minuses the front. So it removes an object, um, essentially. Okay, next we have... Um, the uh, boundary, create boundary, sometimes you want to take, you want these three shapes, you don't want to delete the shapes, but you just want to create a boundary that goes all the way around these shapes, and you want that as a new shape. So I'm going to select all three objects, so I'll click create boundary, and as I move that out of the way now, you can see there's a new shape that's made up of the boundary of those shapes. So you can, you know, stick all kinds of shapes together, um, and it will create uh, a boundary shape. So when I select all of this, it'll select a boundary going all the way around, create boundary, and this is good for cutting out decals or cutting out stickers, um, but you can see how easy it is to start creating shapes once you have uh, those tools in there. All right, let's see if I've forgotten anything. We've got um, create boundary, that's pretty much everything. So we've taken a look at a detailed pick tool, We've taken a look at the mirrors and combines, welds, trims, intersects, and uh, you know, play with all of those commands, and get familiar with them. They are certainly something that you use quite frequently. Um, there is keyboard shortcuts for most of these things as well, and they uh, all can be found just along this bar here. So that's all for this, uh, this episode. Um, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.